Oh my goodness. Ren, my brother from another mother. You don't even know. <laughs> I am so, so honored that you're here. Welcome. Oh, it's my pleasure. Nice, nice. I'm so, so um, uh, humbled. I know you've done a few interviews lately. I know you're a busy man. So thank you so much for taking the time. I won't keep you too long. I know you. That's cool. No, I'm, I'm fine to chat. I'm, I'm, this is my social life at the moment. <laughs> I'm just like in clinic and I'm in Calgary. So it's fine. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Good. I'm happy to hear yeah. that. How is it going with the clinics, if I may ask? Is it are you hanging in there? Are you OK? Yeah, it's OK. I'm like, um, it's a lot of the same thing. So at the moment, the treatment's kind of like leveled out a little bit. So I go and I have my IVs every day. And I'll sit there for about an hour. There's there's two different IVs that I'm usually rotating between at the moment. One's glutathione, which helps you detox, and one's this uh, phos phosphatidylcholine or something. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. Um, that helps you detox your body as well. Um, this thing called lipid exchange, and then I'm also doing like uh, it's, it's I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it's trying to basically encourage parts of my brain to communicate. It's like neuro, but it's like something. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but yeah, it's kind of help build rebuild connections with my brain okay and brain damage okay it's yeah. fascinating how far a medicine has come it's really fascinating yeah but i'm glad that you're able to access some some help i'm really thankful to hear that yeah well i'm so glad that you're here i i did prepare a few questions but i'm gonna do my best to not ask as much repetitive questions i reviewed um your interview with knox hill for example i have a lot of respect for that guy and how he approaches things and I reviewed it a bit because I wanted to make sure I don't just ask you all the same questions. So it's like this, you know, broken record. Um, but of course, I want it to be an organic conversation. So whatever you feel you want to share, whatever you're comfortable with, or you want to ask me, I, we can just let the conversation flow and yeah, yeah take don't it from and there. don't feel nervous about asking me anything. That's like I, okay, I'm a bit of an open book to be honest. I don't really mind okay. digging into even the things that may feel uncomfortable because obviously you're coming. At it from a slight, uh, and the re the the ones that I've said yes to of these as well that it's usually the ones that I think will be the most interesting in terms of how different they are to the other yeah. person. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because if there's if there's a bunch of people coming at it from like a hip hop lyric breakdown, yep. it's going to be very it's yep. a lot of the same sort of conversation. So yeah, for, uh, it was one of the reasons I thought something like this would be really cool because it's it's a different perspective and it's a different conversation. Yeah, yeah. For me, that's well, it's, cool. I, it's funny you say that because that's that was actually going to be my first question. Be like, why did you take? Why did you agree to this? Because mm. um, obviously, you know, I'm sure many people would love to pick your brain and get some insight and. Um, sure. My channel is in the process of growing, but I'm nowhere near where some of these reactors are. So I was for very me, yeah, humbled that you agreed to it. Yeah, no, for me, it's, ne it's never really about that. And it's never really about the, the benefit for me more. It's more about, it's the same with my music. So, well, we'll, we'll, we'll save no, this. No, do it, do it, do it, do it. it. Tell me, I, this, this is good. I just wanted to flow. How is it with your music? Like if it's well, no, not about let, let's let's start it from the top and then I'll okay. start and then because otherwise I'll feel really unnatural when I'm talking about it if I'm repeating uh, okay. myself. Okay. Oh, that's if fine. No worries. Yeah, no worries. You, you, you can start from the top and then we'll and we'll get into them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I've been on this journey of exploring your music, as our listeners and viewers know. You've been doing this for uh, for a while now, and it's been taken off, and it's been really exciting to see. Um, I was am fairly new to your whole discography. It started for me with High Ren. And I was a mess because I didn't know who you were. I didn't know what to expect. And that's what I like to do. I don't like to do a bunch of research because I promise my viewers real, real, real talk, real reactions. I want to dive deep. Um, and as you said yourself, I look at it more from a psychological standpoint. Um, I have to tell people a lot of times I'm no official therapist. My master's is in counseling psychology. I worked as a therapist for a while and then I transitioned to teaching. I'm a singer songwriter. So I, I come at it from that angle, not so much as to therapize or whatever that word is people but just to take it apart pull some encouragement and when I saw high Ren, it was ha, hakuna ma shizzle, like I like to say it was very much um a very different experience musically psychologically it was very empowering and it spoke to me personally and that's why I was able to respond the way I did and, and people responded to that um I can tell you're a person of substance. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to interview you and talk to you. How do you feel that everything, and you can go into as much detail as you feel comfortable with, how do you feel everything you've experienced in life, all your ups and downs, has impacted the way that you treat your art, your skills, which is music, the rap, the songwriting? How do you feel that goes together? Your life experience and what, how you translate that into your art. It's interesting because when I first started making music, there was still almost like this necessity to do it. I don't know what it was. I was just obsessed ever since I was very young. But then I suppose just breaking down a very big joint, burning into a small thing, when 
I came out on the tail end of going through a lot of my health problems and a lot of the things that I guess shaped me into writing about the things that I do. Because I'd only have little windows and little pockets of times when I was able to create during the real thick of it. And even now, sometimes to a degree, there's, there's you know, I get up and I'm just not, my body's not working properly. And um, so it becomes even more vital then because it's like, I've got this window. And like, you know, as humans, we have a finite amount of time. And when I have these small pockets of window, it's, it's really when I feel most in line with who I am and what I want to do when I'm creating. And uh, even to the point where I think that was the most depressing thing about being sick is I almost feel like impotent when I can't make. Yeah. I feel I feel yeah. frustrated. Sometimes I've even felt pointless. And so when I was going through years of that, it was that was even more highlighted. So when I get these little bursts of like windows where I can make, it's like it's it's almost like a necessity, like I have to do it. You have to. And yeah. I think that I think that overrode everything. So before I got sick, I suppose now I'm much more firmer in my ground as to my creative vision and, and to when there's too many people coming in giving advice and I'm really clear on something. I think I stand a lot more firmly in that because it, it's so much more valuable to me and also the out, I'm a lot less outcome dependent. It's really just like mm. I have to make it now mm. that I've got this time that I can make it. And if I don't, I'm doing myself a disservice because if I've got this little window and I waste it, then I'm stupid because then when is the next window, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. It's crazy. It's very powerful you say that, even how you phrase that short time that we have. Because I, the, there's a, a psychotherapist called Dr. Yalom who focuses on a lot of existential therapy. And he also, in his book, Staring at the Sun, where he talks about dealing with death, he describes it as, and he was inspired by philosophers like Epicurus and those guys, he describes it as that little window we have that we're in the light, right? We have that mm. phase before birth, like before birth that we don't know what's mm. up and then we don't know what comes after death. That's a matter of faith and you know your mm. worldview. But there's this little snippet, if you will, like you, I guess you could imagine it like a timeline where the light shines on it and that's when we're alive. That little, I don't know, well, maybe that's, that's like a laser thing. beam, you know, that little gap. Because mm. I suppose time is relative, right? And, and our lives and our lives are relative. And, and the yes. interesting thing about me is within that window are then smaller windows. Yeah, you, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so, so whereas for most people, it's a window. It, it, right? Although you can take that window for granted yes. when you haven't, when you don't live within this paradigm of there being the, only these little pockets of moments that you can do stuff. Yeah. So um, I think that would be like my main bit of advice to anybody watching who's creative, who isn't limited by their own physical health yeah. is th this window, it's still only a window. And exactly. And the only reason that my small bursts of time is because they're relative to my life. Whereas... If you've got like an infinite, um, well, not infinite, but relative to how long you are, that big window, right. I would just say, you know, that. if I if I had the physical capacity to be able to like do it every day, I would do it. You would do every it. day. Do every you th day. Do you think it's yeah. possible that because you have experienced that, I I would call it if you're comfortable with that, an existential crisis. I've ex even expressed in my review of Hiren when we come face to face with death, with our mortality, with sickness, or a loved one's dying. Like just realizing, wait a minute, this my time is limited. As we get older, right, we leave those childish ways of I'm forever young, right? We leave that behind. Would you say that it's possible that experiencing that even at a young age allows you to to produce and create what you do in a more condensed way? Because to your point, people that live like your average life and don't have to deal with that, they think they have all the time in the world. So what they create is almost, dare I say, watered down sometimes. But when you come face to face with how finite you are and how small those pockets are, I wonder if what you create becomes more condensed and your quality increases. You know what I mean? Like it's, when you release a song, yeah, no, I, it's I, like, I know, boom. I know what you're asking. It's just, it's just a, it's a difficult question to answer because I've only got my own life experience to compare it to. Do you know what I mean? So like Touché. I started, I, I went on this journey and now where I am, like I, I can't really say with confidence that if I hadn't gone through all these terrible things, that's fair. that I, that I wouldn't still be just as productive because of, I don't know genetics or what or just right. like this this desire burning desire to do it. it it's hard to know really like uh, and anybody saying oh yeah it, it must be because you've gone through all this stuff that you can write like that it's all it's all kind of hypothetical really because there's that's not a true. run that exists there's not a run that exists that hasn't <laughs> you that's know what I mean? true so, uh, so, not that we so know not, alternate not, universe yeah, <laughs> it, it, but the thing is is because there's not a run that hasn't it just comes down to a decision and if I decide that yes and and if I decide that yes, then it also it, it justifies all the 
crap that I went through. Yes. So I might as well decide that, yeah, all of these things that I went through helped me become a better artist. Because if I decide that, then it's not just this pointless, insidious thing that was for nothing. Yes. Because yes. if it is that, then it's a lot easier to feel bitter about it. It's a lot easier to feel kind of bitter, angry at the world or, yeah. or at, at disease with spirituality or anything like that. So, um, I, and, and I think those decisions we can make about loads of things that don't really have a clear answer. So I would always try and decide the one that helps me and not hinders me. Mm, man. You're saying some good stuff. I hope people are listening and paying attention because you are 100% right. A lot of those things are hypothetical. And 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 please know when I ask that, it's not to in any way take away from all the hard work you put in. I think you summarize it very well in that it boils down to a decision. Because if people were to take other life stories and go, well, you know, if I had to go through this or I had this, then, you know, it's it's an excuse, right? We look at alternate options in life and we decide based on that what should have would have could have been all you have is your experience absolutely that makes sense so but it's inspiring and I think that's I think many people can are finding a lot of substance in what you create right you 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 have a, a high level of skill with what you do and I'm no rapper I'm no expert when it comes to hip-hop I love songwriting I love music I love art but you come at the to the table with a high level of refined skills and art to to me and you do it in a way, though, that I feel a lot of people are consuming substance. And I think we live in a time where people are very hungry for that. And I think it's a gift that you take the time to make that choice that you just described because it allows you to bring quality to the table, right? It's a steak versus like, yeah. I don't know, well, pop-tarts. And, and I think also as well, I think it's it, that's why I try as much as I can, as I said before, to not be outcome dependent. I think a lot of people their art suffers when they become art outcome dependent because they're like, they're w they will willingly compromise, mm. which also means compromising substance or they'll pander to an audience mm. that might, because they'll, they'll say, oh, this, this sounds successful. Yeah. So if I want to be successful, I'm going to do stuff like that and they'll, right. they'll try imitating it. Or they might say, this subject matter I've heard a lot and it does well, so I'm going to talk about this and, and people don't really talk about their unique life experiences and they don't have to necessarily be profound this is what i found like a lot of like really relatable artists even if you're a if you're a kid that sits at home playing xbox all day and you're singing writing a song about smashing people at call of duty i think that would probably go down really well because yeah. it's your truth and it like and i think that's the thing is when when you're trying to sing about something that, you're singing about a love song when you're not necessarily in love or you're singing about coming from the hood when you don't come from the hood it's like what I, yeah that that that's when you can you kind of lose it and you disconnect but if you had come from that area and you have had a rough and you rap about it then then i feel like you, people can tell it's, and it's not even like yeah it, it just the it's authentic. authenticity just leaks it comes through and yeah so yeah i think um and i think not by not being outcome dependent and not going I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write a smash record. I okay. mean, that works for some people, but for me, the second that thought starts coming into my head, I feel like I've lost that substance because it's it's not really about that. It's more about what can I personally gain, but that shouldn't really be for me what it's about. Right. That's very helpful, even for me personally, when it comes to creativity, um, creating not just, you know, videos or content, but ge just generally in life. And that actually answers my second question because I know you've mentioned, um, you know, different artists that have influenced you in the past, Method, Eminem, how you had some drum and bass influences. When I heard you mention yeah. that in your uh, um, interview with Knox Hill, I'm like, oh, snap, you know, he likes drum and bass. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and you have unique elements that influence <laughs> the music you create. But my question was going to be, how does that apply to songwriting? I guess in a way you already kind of answered that. It's the the message or your experience you're sharing are most yeah, of your songs like that I, I, know, I know i know his influences it's impossible for them not to trickle through i think like we like ev everything that we're, we're like a sponge of information and ev everything we listen to everything we watch like we're, we're gonna there's, there's probably like melodies that i've accidentally ripped off there's probably lyrics and things that yeah. find their way into that subconsciously i think there's a word for it there's like a legal discrepancy there's a where they'll it, it's like where they're it, oh, i've forgotten the word now but there have been legal cases where people accidentally right. plagiarize people's stuff. But but to a much broader degree, I think inspiration is essentially just absorbing information from everywhere. Yes. <clears throat> I take a lot of inspiration from movies, actually, for my writing. Okay. Um, but, but um, yeah, it's, ju it's just really 
so I think it's it's impossible for not to like listen to a bunch of stuff and for that to like come through in your work. It just and it becomes this kind of kaleidoscope of things that you've heard and watched. Yeah, in the past. that have yeah. made you. Well, I think there's yeah. hu humility in being aware of that, and also because I think it reminds us that we're all part of a whole. I think as soon as people want to just claim one thing solely for themselves, right, as if the wisdom originated with them. I think yeah. we, we lose the point that actually things are quite cyclical, right? We we ripple into the future and into people we might never meet unknowingly. There's yeah, no I way think, of I think measuring true that. I think true originality doesn't really exist. I think yeah. I think, um, it, uh, and what I love about creativity is is essentially just making something new out of everything that already exists. That's the way that I approach it. Like, I I, I think it's very hard to come. I can I can probably sit here and say a sentence that has never been said, and I, sometimes I do this in the history of the world. Like, the bottle cap dog fed a small green man a hat made of sand. I feel like I'm probably the only person right now, until people have said said right. this interview, who's ever said that. But that doesn't mean it's original. Right. <laughs> and it's the same. It has a Dr. Me. Seuss vibe, just a little bit. <laughs> 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 I heard something with a green and a hat. I'm like, wait a minute. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But it's true. It, it originated in you and. There is, I think what's special because there's this duality in everything in life. The older I get, the more I'm like, it's both and. Very many things, mm -hmm. even though we live in a very polarizing time where it's, you know, it, we would think we have to pick a side. A lot of topics seem to be a both and thing and a very hard, it makes it harder to find um, conclusions and compromises. But when it comes to that, I think it can keep us both humble because we're, mm. we know we're part of a whole. We were influenced by generations pre before us. We will leave mm. and hopefully influence those coming after us for the better. But at the same time, we also know we're still unique because no one else is Ren. There's only one single one of you. So there, there's things that have trickled into your of course. art and existence you are still and always will be the very only one that you are. And so there's this duality. You see what I'm saying? Of connectedness and uh, individuality. Yeah, of course. And, and, of course, and my, my specific concoction of neurochemicals exactly. and uh, genetics and everything. And it, life experiences from yeah. the moment I'm born. Will, sorry, there's a big... Uh, oh, I can't hear we've it. Got, we've got... Um, we have um, big forest fires outside of Calgary at the moment. Oh, wow. Not not too close, but that the Good. whole city's covered in smoke, and they've been doing fire alarm testing all day. Um, wait, I've lost my train of thought. So I was, I was there was something I really wanted to say. Wait, remind me what the question was. Again. We we were speaking of connectivity and individuality and the concoction of oh, your mind that is unique to you. Ex yeah, ex exactly. So we're like we, it's impossible, and I think that's what separates because there's there's all these big discussions now about. Um, artificial intelligence and people and what differentiate and um, what's the point with because they're generating like whole beats and whole um, mm -hmm. songs out of yep. AI at the moment. I don't know if you heard the Drake imitation. I haven't crazy. seen it. I want to react to it, but I've heard of the but, AI. Yeah, trend. the lyrics are crazy. And then, and then AI art as well. And it's, it's like, so there's this danger where they're like, well, but how are we going to tell the difference? And I, and I think the, the difference is like, we are our, our soup of chemicals and and our imperfections are almost what are going to make the art it, it's that it's not a perfectly algorithmically mm. figured out thing it's it, it's all those little imperfections and uh, and you could argue that you could program program those into an algorithm but every single person is going to have their own yeah. unique one yeah and i think that i think really we'll come to a t time of like pre and post ai art or whatever mm. they're going to call it when it gets to a point where it just becomes undeniably uh, in the forefront of everything right. um, and, I, and I think the things that will make the more human performances human are the things that feel raw stripped back and imperfect yes. and I think there'll be a real craving for it. I almost think that there's a craving for it even with, without AI in the equation because I think when you listen to the radio you hear so much like compressed sort of yeah. like yeah. very sort yeah. of formulaic music not to not to, I think it's good by the way I, that, that's not to like criticize it because it serves its purpose and you go to a club and it's really it's really it has its place but I think that's why when you then have like a live session or something on YouTube that's just super stripped back yeah. and super there's something very yeah. human that makes you like when I was like looking and I discovered like Atash Sultana or like these acoustic artists that are getting really big like yeah. it there's just something that's I'm like I really connect to it and I think it's because it's more fundam it feels for me this is subjective but it feels for me more fundamentally human yeah so which is why I can just like 
really yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, and I think uh, something that even to that argument, you know, where people say, oh, you can imp- uh, you can program imperfections into the algorithm. I think a big part that will distinguish us from AI always is we can experience ourselves. AI cannot experience itself, right? Even if it can speak as intelligent as a human can, it will never fully experience it itself with the neurons and the c- consciousness. And I think to your point earlier about it not just being about results, because we live in a time where everything is results, right? The new currency is views. Right. That's that's how you get that's that's money. The currency is views and likes and clicks. And if you can get a large audience, be it through something valuable or as scandalous as possible. Right. I mean, just is the crazier, the better you have people's attention. And so this focus has shifted in the music industry as well, in my opinion, where everything becomes about the results and what other people will say, right? Pleasing the crowd. So when you have someone, including yourself, someone who comes to the table and says, this is my experience, because you speak with a lot of wisdom. And I'm not saying this to like, you know, blow smoke up your face. Like I genuinely personally feel like there's a lot of wisdom and life experience. When someone comes to the table with wisdom and compassion, I think people are hungry for that because it shows me you've experienced yourself enough to be able to share your personal experiences with others. That's not something AI can ever give. You know what I mean? And I think that what, that's what makes music unique as well. Um, when, it, when it can be felt, because it's like this, it's almost like this human, it's hard to put in words, but it's like yeah, uh, human and, and I, and I guess, feeling. I guess the difference as well is, is that usually with um, tech models, they're, they're programmed so that they serve a p- specific function. So they have a, a, a destination and role that they have to complete. With humans, because we're so much more like existential or we're so much, we're, so, we're just figuring out what it all means still. And we're constantly on that question. There's not really an end goal to our motivations and right. so that there can't really be an outcome uh, it was even what i was saying about outcome before but but like whatever i do isn't i don't i i haven't quite figured it out it's just it's just based on this gut instinct of what i feel like i should be doing mm-hmm. um which i think makes it again yeah that's a very human thing is we're just we're we're kind of like blindly even if you're not religious even for a totally a- atheist person there's still some sort of moral compass in us that's searching yeah. for some sort of salvation yep. um or searching just for some sort of sense of what we should be doing yeah. and, and that should is such a like it's such an arbitrary concept because nobody really knows and Absolutely. we're trying to figure it out through religion we're exactly. trying to figure out that through life like should we should a good human being be one that gets his head down and works? Should a good human being be one that enjoys themselves? Should it be someone who lifts others up? Should it be one who s- pursues power? Like, we don't really know. No. We're all just like... We're no, all just right? It's always like somewhere on that scale, right? It's not... Because yeah. neither of it in itself is bad, in my opinion, in, in and of itself. It's always this extreme that causes that confusion. That, that being said, because that leads me to my next question, trying to be a person who is true to themselves, their experience, who... You're, you're going, to, it seems to me you're going with the flow, the journey of life, even in your art, right? And, you, and ideally you want to stay in that pocket, right? So you can keep creating your authentic self. How does that work with someone who is getting all the traction that you're getting now? Your channel is blowing up. People are well-deserved, listening, paying mm. attention, responding. How do you find that balance and not get sucked it, into the results it, it, in that? It's it's easier right now because I'm I'm going through brain damage treatment, so I like it's so much easier for me to detach because at the end of the day, it's like even before, things really started properly properly taking off around January this year. But before that, there was, I still had like I guess it was more of a sort of like underground cult sort of following. So I was still I still gone through. I think there's a few phases you have to go through when you start entering the sphere, like the sphere of consciousness of humanity. One is dealing with criticism because at, when you start putting yourself out there, you'll start getting quite a lot of criticism, no matter what you do, even if you think that you're doing it, like it will come. And then you have to go through almost like this stages because because humans don't take criticism well unless, and the only way you get used to it is really going through it. So you, so there was that stage of like overcoming, like not taking it to heart or not taking it personally, just being like, actually. Uh, this is cool and everybody everyone if i was to make something that's like super that everybody likes then it's just really quite vanilla to be honest like or not even vanilla because then there'll be some people that are like that's yeah. too vanilla so so <laughs> yeah. it, i think it's i think it's just impossible and so when i came to realize that i i, I when i see those comments that you know they they don't really stick to me at all even if they're really really harsh like i it, and and i think that's the first stage and then the second stage is 
when you're getting all this praise, not in letting that sort of inflate your ego to the point where you think that you're some sort of demigod because that's also not true as well it's just that humans like to put people on positions of pedestals when they're creating for whatever reason that or, or celebrity actors politicians right they they, they like humans like to think of somebody as some sort of archetype or um when it's not the case we're all we're all human beings and some of us are leaning in certain directions more than others and so that's the second thing is you have to not take yourself too seriously and luckily i think i had quite a lot of time within this cult following so that now when i see all this stuff on the screen on the internet it's 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 not really it doesn't really leak into what i'm doing as a human too much and i also think the the fact that i'm going through this health stuff and like you know like i've been accepted the fact that you know like i i could a potentially be ill for the rest of my life or b this illness could take me out quicker than the, the average person like having those things as well i think really puts things in perspective as well where you're not like yeah i don't know and also i think the third one was like i think i'm really good at empathizing and people watching and i I think i understand the sort of person that i am and when i've seen people who are similar to me in positions of fame it it doesn't look that rewarding (laughs) like they they look like they struggle with it and so for me again like i'm I'm quite an introvert and, and for me like again separating myself from it and not just being like accolades i'm not you know like yeah, I don't know. The way to, I think, for me to keep myself grounded and and centered in all of this, even if it gets mad, if it gets ten times madder, and um, is really um, just focusing what's important, what how I can best serve people, which is just to focus on the creative process rather than like the celebrity process. Right, right. Do you know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for real. That's that's awesome. It's funny, you know, not funny. It's awesome, but funny because you share it with such substance and everything you say like leads me to the answer of my next question (laughs) i almost want to be like well so my next question was going to be this but you already answered that too (laughs) but no because because i i really want people to listen to the things you're saying because i love coming at things psychologically philosophically but i could get lost in that right i mean i could talk you know my head off into the clouds and just sit there and you know just get lost Mm -hmm. and daydream and i think important because at the end of the day you know daily life still calls us and our responsibilities important is what are we going to choose? What are we going to pull out of it? And I really, really hope that people are listening, not just and admiring your art, not just in the sense of, wow, he's so great, but actually pulling that for themselves. That's something that I like passing on to my viewers often is now you go do, you know, don't just sit here and say, wow, I wish this, I wish I was like this person and I wish I could do this. We were created to create. And so by sharing what you just did, I feel a lot of those of us who have this this fear of creating of putting ourselves out there or many out there who struggle with the imposter syndrome right um many hold back when it comes to creating and i don't just mean music or art or youtube i mean anything right there's so many things day to day we we can create people hold back because they think they're not ready yet or they're not worthy so i think i hope i hope people are really listening to what you're saying yeah what what one one thing i feel about that is like be scared and do it anyway Mm. and then because the times that you mess up or like you do something out of place or like they're like amazing times to learn i think yeah Uh, yeah anytime and i love being wrong well i love having an opinion and then somebody shoots it down and i'm totally proven wrong because that sticks with you because humans don't like to be wrong. So when I when I've put something out there and, and someone's actually like, no, this, 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 and they put forth really good points and arguments, I'm like, that changed my mind. That's one of my favorite things because it means that I've grown, even though there's that uncomfortable period where you're yeah. like, oh, I'm not right about this. And and, and I think that's, um, yeah, because I think we're very conditioned for our opinions to be. Right, yeah, of course. So, because we're, we... so we're so desperate to be right, but I actually, I, I quite enjoy being wrong. And I think that, you know, I, and I also like we're ever changing. So even like my political, my philosoph- philosophical, phil- philosophical um, or anything, opinions will probably be totally different within five right. years time. And that's fine. That That's why I think, you know, like in this era of like, well, they'll they'll go back 10 years and find, find like an offensive tweet that a celebrity's mm-hmm. tweeted and then they'll cancel them for it and then they'll pull them up. Like, I think that's so stupid, man. I think it it's is. so stupid. Even if they said something particularly offensive, because I feel like. I feel like we are like we're quite clumsy creatures and like to be held accountable for the, your whole life for an action in one point in a moment. Obviously, there are exceptions to the rule, like if you're yeah. a serial killer. <laughs> but, yeah. I, but I feel like I feel like with things that are in the social space, um, 
I don't know. And and it's usually celebrity. It's it's usually celebrities are uh, yeah. pulled up on something that they said. There's there's loads of cases of it. And then they're like, you said something this this or this. It's almost like growing isn't allowed. But which is so it's ironic. It is a it's a shame because it's hypocritical. Because even those people who are uh, who are not allowing growth in human beings have plenty yeah, of that, that, skeletons that in their like, closet. That Eminem line where it's like, the only difference is I got the bars to say it. Where, yep. where, where it's like, you're in, the, you're in your living rooms joking about it with your mates, but I'm actually yep. saying it and exactly. you're saying that I'm offensive. I, that, that's, I, like, I like that line because I think it's true. Like a lot of these people are quick to, uh, well, it's, it's people in glass houses chucking stones essentially, mm -hmm. I yep. think a lot of the time. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, what, what I don't want to, what I don't want to happen is like end up in a society where, we can't even make jokes anymore because it's become so sensitive that we're offending anybody with anything that we say. I, I really right. think that I think there are all, there there should obviously be movements towards um, improving language so that people's feelings don't get hurt, right? Yeah. But I don't think I think intent should always be taken rather than the words themselves. It should always be like, what's this person's intent? Are they genuinely yeah. meaning harm? Yeah. And if they're not genuinely meaning uh -huh. harm and they're being clumsy, yeah. then I think that there should be a space of more forgiveness. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a, in a world where we can't joke about things. And right. w we should not take ourselves too seriously, I don't think so. Yeah. And I know that that's, that's easy to say in the position, I, I, I guess, of privilege, but... Um, I, I, st I still think that we are, we're at danger of becoming so hypersensitized that it's just, we become a humanless world. Mm, I agree with that. Well, then I think it puts people in a place where nobody is safe, right? If I have to, if I'm afraid of what, what I'm saying because you'll judge me and you're afraid of what I'm going to do, how I'm going to judge you, everybody's hiding behind walls and we, we're, yeah, re yeah. we're relational creatures and relationship works only on trust. I mean... I, speaking of animals, right? I mean, because even in the animal kingdom, you have these different animals. And I like to say people are like animals. I know, you know, to a degree, you know, there's a higher level of consciousness compared to certain creatures. But when, it, when I look at personality types and different people, it's funny because it feels like just different kinds of animals out there. And I think, yeah. you know, if we're just out here, everybody's just hiding, looking who's the predator, who's the prey. It's like, come on, we should be a little more evolved that we can do better than that because we're missing yeah, we should, I think so we much should relationship. Just stop we should just stop taking life so seriously. Seriously, yeah. Yeah. That's a good reminder. Have you always been like that, or do you feel like that's something you've grown into? I'm just curious. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always, I think I've always been quite outspoken and cocky. Yeah. I just, I was just, I was just dulled for a few years there with my. Even when I was a teenager, I was like that. I think. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just in my blood. To yeah. Be, when I was in school, I was a little shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was al I was always the one that would like answer the teacher back with some sort of smart ass remark. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, hey, we need yeah. we need people like that. We need people like yeah, that. Um, myself in trouble a lot. So speaking of human behavior versus like you know the animal world and being uh, more evolved or well supposed to be <laughs> many of many aren't. Um, you have your recent song Animal Flow out. I re I reviewed it. I'm about I'm going to be sharing the reaction in the next couple of days. Um, oh. And I reviewed it. And I don't want to say too much so that people that haven't heard it yet can go check it out themselves. But um, I will say this, I perceive, now this is very subjective, that no. you mentioned things like, you know, being, being radical, right? Even in, your, even in the lyrics, which works well with what you were just saying. Um, there was something about it at certain points where it almost felt even a little more provocative and a little darker. Like there was yeah. elements coming in, like the fishnet, you know, you even know what I'm saying? And certain elements, there were more females in this video than what I've, what I've seen so far. And again, I'm fairly new to learning all your discography, still songs that I have to react to. But yeah. was that intentional? Am I completely missing the mark? And that's always what you do? Like, where was, where was your mind when it came to this I the think, atmosphere I think for, of the song for a lot a lot of this album and you, you'll probably hear more of the stuff my 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 it was always a bit more of a darker on the cusp album so like and and, and with things like i take a lot of influence um from from movies with a lot of sex and violence and stuff like that in them and I, i'm not really one to shy away from it and it's it's not used in a way where it's like here's a music video with attractive ladies so that we can try and like objectify these people to get more views it's right. never it's never comes from a place of that it's more from and i think you that would be obvious by watching the video do you know what i mean yeah, exactly it's more just it's it's more that the, this part of the human psyche is very real you know we are as as, as much as we are like creatures of 
upstanding manners and stuff like that yes. we, we are primal you know, like, we're animals violence is, a, violence is a huge part of our culture sex is a huge part of our yeah. culture and um yeah I'm, I, I don't ever want to sort of shy away from things um uh, just to again it just is what it is like yeah I, 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 some of these th- sometimes when I'm like imagining these videos and what they would be it's not it's not even really a like it's just a gut feeling. It's just like we we need this here. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and I suppose that that gut feeling just comes from whatever it is, and then and, yeah. and, and then and then we do it. But yeah, that what, makes to sense. be honest, there wasn't a huge amount of thought behind. Yeah. Getting okay. getting uh, they, they, they were just my friends who were up for it, and and we um we were like yeah let's go for this kind of like almost Rocky horror show style yeah, yeah, vibe yeah. like fit, yeah, yeah. fish nets and, well and some, yeah. sometimes I also and that's why I'm that's why I'm clarifying it's subjective sometimes I'll also read into more into things more than maybe there is there for example yeah. um uh and I didn't I didn't uh, see any type of like message of objectification myself either I knew that that wasn't the purpose at all but I for example when we're talking animal kingdom and the different things uh, or animal flow and just that those those parallels a lot of a lot of to me a lot of symbolism a lot of messages that can be interpreted in a different way which I love music like that where there's different things to pull out even just using things like the fishnet you know uh, stockings fit very well to the idea of animal flow right trying to capture yeah, and all, something and we, i don't know if you meant just, that but we use fish it popped into my fish. mind as well I, w- I was also we we're also quite heavily influenced by um uh eyes wide shut for that scene as well okay. i kind of wanted this like secret society <coughs> and i don't know if you've ever seen that film but that's that's very like uh-huh. the, where they where they come into that party tom cruise comes walks in and that's yeah. very like <clears throat> yeah, I, okay. lo- I love that movie Okay. Yeah, I was I was wondering because again, I don't I don't know sometimes if I'm just over, you know, interpreting, oh, fishnet capturing fish. Oh, you know, sex is used to capture people, you know, like I'm over here yeah. like reading really deep be, into I mean, I, this 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 the, this is the brilliant <laughs> thing, man. Even if even if I m- maybe didn't uh intend it, I think right. it's it's really cool that that that's where your mind ended up. Yeah, seeing the symbolism yeah. there. But sometimes Yeah, no, I think it's I think it's wic- I think it's wicked. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I I I, I love I love it when there's imp- interpretations put on my stuff that maybe I didn't even see myself. Me, mean, it, it, okay. Because then I'm then I'm looking at it totally differently the next time I see it. It's brilliant. Okay, okay, that's what I was wondering. So, uh, speaking of you know, well, speaking of brilliant, uh, you have this art with words and songwriting and storytelling, which I know you've been told many times, and people refer to you as like a modern day Bart, right, Shakespeare and such. <laughs> And uh, it's it's fitting, in my opinion, because you are, to me, a professional storyteller, a composer, right? Um, but what's interesting, when I looked up more of the history of what uh, such, you know, storytellers did, it also spoke of commemorating um, some, a patron's ancestors, that sometimes they were, I guess, hired or put into places to comm- commemorate um, a patron's ancestors, to praise that patron of their own activities, do you, if you could, and this is going to be hard maybe to narrow down, but if you could pick someone or something in life to commemorate, and I know your art is very diverse, there's many things even in the course of your life you're going to be creating, but if you had to pick one person that you would be a Bart for, right, that you would commemorate or something that you would want to convey, like one key message through your writing, through your art, what would that be? I think... I th- I feel like my, and, and this is probably before I've even gotten sick with, and it's just always been a constant theme and I don't even really know why. It's just been a a, a want for me to try and help people. Uh, and I don't really even know how, how the answers of how to do this, but it's just help people be better to themselves and better to the world that they live in. And and that's a very complex thing, uh, uh, problem that we're facing because we're very complex creatures that are, and we're driven by so many things that sometimes contradict themselves. But like, if I was to have like a life purpose or life mission, it would probably be to try and make sure that we have head to as close as to something that looks like a protopia or utopia as pos <coughs> as possible. Um. Even if it's impossible, even if it's impossible to get there, I think trying to get there, we should always try to get there. Because yeah. w- why not? Like, if if we're going right. to aim for something, why don't right. we aim for something great? Right, um, absolutely. Even if <laughs> even if we don't make it, if our intentions to get there, <coughs> I think I think that um, I was thinking about this a lot. I, th- I think that 
um, there's this saying that the uh, life imitates art. And I think a lot of our movies, a lot of our, when we imagine the future, and it's also a lot of the novels that I was attracted to are all quite dystopian and they're all like quite, they all paint a bit of a bleak image of what the future could be, but we're really attracted to those sorts of things because we think that they're prolific, we think they're profound. Um, and some of my favorite authors like Huxley and Orwell and all these sci-fi books where people end up in some sort of, uh, or the films like The Matrix or yeah. stuff like that. But like, I think, I think what I would love to start doing and love seeing more of is more imagined vers versions of utopian society within within film, within uh, art, within... Because I think that by focusing our intentions on those things, we're bringing them more into existence. Whereas when we're focusing on division, when we're focusing on suffering, when we're focusing on totalitarianism, it's almost like we're birthing it because... And maybe that's like a... We're, well, we're only doing that because that's what our society looks like right now. But I think it just takes people to start... And <laughs> I mean, I'm being a hypocrite because a lot of my work is quite dark, but but like... I would honestly, it still kind of feels like that would be an objective that I want to push towards is, is moving towards a world where we treat A, the habitat that we live a lot better and B, each other a lot better. Um, yeah, that, that would be wicked. <laughs> that would be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> I agree. And and yes, you're right. There's there's quite a bit of your songs that may seem darker or deal with heavier stuff. But I would, I would say in order to reach such a utopia and create a place that is filled with light and hope and peace, we have to address the darkness too. And I think that's something you showcased powerfully, even in Hiren, that duality and that battle. I mean, it inspired mm. me so much. I made a shirt out of it, dude. I'm wearing it right cool. now. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had, cool. I did, a, I picked something that kind of reflects, well, for one light sun, right. But also like a clock that just, because I was really, a lot of what I pulled out of that song was very existentialist, uh, existentialism, yeah. you know, that, that battle in life. And so that idea yeah. of time, the concept of time, dark and light, right. The yellow versus mm. the black, because I saw a lot of that duality in that battle. Um, and then I just, uh, put, uh, but I don't know if you can see it, a uh, dance yeah. in the light, because the conclusion of that to me was, uh, and it, again, this is subjective, but there was no shying away from the dark and the heavy, which I think is essential mm. if we're going to find the light. We have, right. We yeah. can't, we were aware of the light because of the darkness and vice versa. But at the same time, for me, the song concluded with you standing up and boy, that got me. <laughs> I was a mess because even from my own personal experience, that's what a step closer to that utopia looks like. And that and that can be on a macro level, right, as a society, and that can be on a micro level when we choose yeah. not to give up, when we choose life, when we say, you know what, I'm surrounded by darkness, but I'm going to stand up, I'm going to dance in the light. And so that song and then people's comments really inspired it. Um, and I <laughs> put it on a T-shirt. I'm like, man, it's a, I need a, we need to dance in the light, but it's an everyday choice. And when I say micro level, that sometimes boils down to just being willing to get up out of bed for those who are, you know, are struggling with depression and anxiety or mm. people who are but in relationships, have kids like that day to day choice of I got to cook again. I got to, you know, go to work again. I got to those mini steps of choosing yeah. life. But they're, they're just as important as the big steps. And they, and they, yeah, they, they should, because the, those, those little micro choices and, the, and creating your own personal utopias within, even within your own head. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that's, that's the starting point anyway, is that it has to start within your own head because how, how could it, how could it um, be projected onto the world if yeah. it's not, ev if it doesn't even exist within yourself. So yeah. I, I think that's, that's the crucial first place for to exist. And, and then, and then it just comes at like, the, the difficulty then is when you have this feeling, how do you then relay that into actual practical information in the real world? Because, you know, you, you, you have people far more um, academically studied into all the systems yeah. that, that work, that didn't work, that, uh, and, and that would, would look at an interview like this and go, this is quite a naive um, yep. idealist viewpoint yeah, of the of world course. that doesn't come from a real place of actually existing within these spheres, and I'd actually, I'd actually agree with that. So my, because, because I, because I, I am one person, but I feel like with collective intelligence, there's, uh, there's enough of us to be able to figure it out. Um, right. And it doesn't, and it doesn't even necessarily mean rejecting models of the past. I, I think there's. Um, th 
that, that there's a quote that's it's, it's don't kill what you hate but take what you love so because because when we're focusing on the negative and trying to kill the negative yeah. uh it, 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 it's like hate breeds hate so so it's more about okay what's working brilliant in in, in any of these systems uh yeah, yeah. The, 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 the governors what's working what isn't working what can we take and what can we expand upon to um <clears throat> to carry us into a brighter future I absolutely think. and it, and it yeah. is a flow which you know that again makes me think of the idea of, of the animal kingdom and animal flow right um though there was a w way much more to the the lyrics that you wrote in the song um than that but it makes me think of the ecosystem right how things flow and you have different roles in different places and, and i agree yeah real in real life there is a lot of darkness and a lot of struggle that we won't have that utopia overnight but i i also think that we can attract i know some people call it like manifesting and stuff you know i mean I, I don't know if i would go that far as some people see it but i think what we consume what we surround ourselves with that determines i mean it even says right show me your friends and i'll tell you who you are right so i think yeah. the things we fill our mind with the things we surround ourselves with will determine what direction we're going and the more if it's the more that it's light and hope and so other people that also want that utopia i think it's possible i mean it's not going to be yeah, and and, and like uh, but... coming back to that because you were saying what you took from that song, I I think I think that there's always going to be this pendulum. So I don't I don't think yeah. I don't think this state of eternal bliss really exists on Earth. Right. I, th I think, but I, but I think that um, that there's a lot there's a lot pushing it in a particular direction right now. So to push it in the other direction, and you know, mm -hmm. so it just falls so wherever it wherever the chips may fall. Mm -hmm. And that maybe maybe the utopia is 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 an idealistic dream. But I, I think for people who are pushing in that direction, it just really it kind of helps yes. balance the yes. scales a little bit. Absolutely. Um, uh, and I think that really just comes from uh, my opinions will probably change as, as I'm challenged. But I, I think it really comes from healthy mediation between people so that when the we're adaptable to change we're adaptable to be wrong uh, and, and we're able to kind of tolerate each other even if yeah. someone else's opinion may really not sit well with each other it's like yeah. how do we accommodate all these because humans are so complex how do we accommodate everything exactly. and then also as well i was thinking a lot about this as well if if we are to re progress within a profit-based economy um which makes sense in a lot of ways which doesn't make sense and is more negative in others i think that we have to find a way to tie social good into profit somehow mm -hmm. i don't really know how that looks yet because it mm -hmm. doesn't exist but it's like if we somehow tie getting rich into like so people can still get rich but within that it's tied to so social good so right. at some point when what you're doing to make you rich isn't aligned with social good right the, the profit that comes in maybe isn't I, I don't i don't really know it doesn't exist so i don't know how it would work but if you if there's some way to tie social good into the monetary system mm -hmm. uh, and imagine and envision something where you actually profit more on a a social sense yeah maybe not so much on like because because there there are bad examples of this like the so i think like social credit scores uh it's, that gets a little bit black mirror where you're mm -hmm. kind of you're you're given points based on yeah. how much of a good citizen you are i think that can that can tip into the world of like totalitarianism and it yep. can tip into the world of giving too much state control but so i think these social good first of all needs to be really defined like what is actual what what really is this? What does it mean? Right. And then once we've got a definition of what it means, and I, I really think that it should be tied into a uh, conserving the habitat we live in because with with talking about moving to Mars before we're talking about cleaning up our own back garden. I know, right? Isn't that crazy? It's like, sure. <laughs> it's I don't even know. Don't send me on another planet. Fix this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 that's and that's the thing, and and, and I think I think that um. I think that sh that should be a big part of it uh, beyond because uh, because there, there's a lot of arguments on a social right. level what is good what is bad and, right, and I right. don't think we'll ever totally agree on that but but I think there should just be fundamental things like social good just basically means what contributes mm -hmm. to the chance that we're not going to be here in about 500 years yeah. and what prolongs the chance that we're going to be here for a, as long as yeah. it, it takes for something to yeah. external to come and wipe us out uh, rather than ourselves so uh, and I, th I think as if we keep asking that question and tie that into all our models of existence mm -hmm. then it, it's there's got to be a way and i think that it starts with self-awareness because you're right there is not a whole lot of monetary um reward 
for doing social good, right? I mean, if we got richer off of doing social good, everybody would be doing it. It's more usually sure. like a good feeling, right? People that like to help and volunteer, they have exactly. that internal locus of control. They feel motivated because it feels good, but it doesn't pay the bills. And so yeah. I think that a lot of it, and this is something you said in the beginning, boils down to our own intentions. And if you mm. have people that have pure hearts that are choosing life, I say this a lot on the channel, in what they say, what they do, right? And what they fill their minds with, what they surround themselves with. You can have people that are profiting monetarily who have a pure heart, who are walking justly and acting humbly going, I want to do good. And I think, I know this sounds idealistic as well, but I think those who've been given much, who have a platform, and you're doing it right now in real time, who have the ear of many can impact those. But it starts with everyone saying, okay, you know what? I hear Ren. You know, I hear what he's mm. saying. What can I do? Um, yeah. But it, it takes, but, but it my, takes self-reflection. My, 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 my thing is I think it changes. It takes a change, quite a foundational level change in the system for it to be like, it's not just people who are drawn to altruism. That's true. That's like, true. People are rewarded for social good, even if if it's for self. If we can tweak it enough, for the, so like even the people who are like hella <laughs> selfish right. still get rewarded for <laughs> contributing. It's tricky though, <laughs> because the more you have like someone or a group in charge of rewarding that, now we're talking control, yeah, right? I and I like this is, my this freedom. Is the, this is the, yeah, and, and that's, the, that's the thing. That's why I think it's a very complex problem it to is. solve. It is, um, but, but I, it's a great it's a great um, problem to present because if we if we can um, give the problem a name, we can come together and try to figure out a solution, right? If if people are just at the table to fight and they just yeah. listen to argue, not to listen, then we'll yeah. never find a solution. It starts Cause, with cause the, th the thing is, is like people people complain about. I think we actually live in a really abundant amazing time right now and people will complain about it a lot and my my fear isn't really about this time that we're living in now because it's not terrible but it could be i, th I think that's it's, it's the foresight that where we're heading on the course that we are means that like the the weaknesses and cracks within our infrastructures i th i think are going to show themselves and quite severely so we might as well try and prevent that as much as possible um now just by thinking about Pre like preventative solutions right. now right. before it's too late and and but it's really i think what humans are really good at is just like if things are okay right now yes complacency what's the point in changing it and and then i think i think covid was the first real like Mm -hmm. warning light yeah but i don't think that's potentially the worst thing that could happen to us but i no. think that was the first light but it, it was the first warning light that like our infrastructures aren't built to deal with right like th right. things that happen when on a mass scale and Absolutely. We, there's just a lot of panic there's a lot of fear there's a lot of misunderstanding of like and there's a lot of misinformation as well which is why there was such a political divide during that time too so i think i think um yeah we just really i think we just really need to start asking these questions a lot i'm accidentally talking about this stuff way more than music at the moment <laughs> no that's fine hey that's what we are all about on this channel and uh, so are a lot of the people that that stop by it's all about a combination between music philosophy psychology i'm gonna have to start like adding to the list when i introduce myself i'm like hey it's all about music and psychology lately i'm going and philosophy and anthropology and all the ologies <laughs> Yeah. That makes for a long introduction, but no, this is the good stuff. And I feel because music um, is not, it is art and it is entertaining, but it is a language, in my opinion, a universal language that connects people even beyond actual language barriers. And so these conversations are essential because there's something beautiful about just listening to music just to listen to it. But if we can actually also convey something, you know, um, beyond just arguing, right? Uh, mm and the left and the right and all that polarization and we can come to the table and go, hey, what th we actually all want the same thing, right? When it comes to yeah. death anxieties and our existential fears, our journeys are all very different. Our opinions, our worldviews of what was before, what comes after, but the here and now, mm. we're all sharing a very similar experience and that I, we're I all think, breathing. I think s sickness makes that really obvious, like, because it strips away everything that's not important it's almost like it's almost like a trial by fire like it burns mm. away everything that's not useful because then you only you just survive through the day so when i was at my my illest and i think that's why i hold on to a lot of these values now and and try and want want to see points of mediation between people because when when it burns away loads and loads of different things you like you just start to realize that the things that we think that are so important that are causing us anxiety and that are causing us anger that 
angers me about that person over there who's doing and saying these things that I don't agree with. Like, it really just gets rid of all of that. And we, and we realize that the foundational fundamental things that we need to be happy are actually quite simple. And, and, and really, at a, a base level, I would say the first one is just feeling content in your own body. And that's the thing that I've been chasing for the past 11 years. It's just like, I would love to be able to just sit here and not And, and and to not feel pain like that's sorry no no it's okay uh, that, i think like really that's that top trumps everything else and then and then uh, there's all the obvious ones like food and shelter and then and then your social circle it sh should be good and then you you start to realize sorry you start to realize e e even me now like things are starting to become successful and I'm starting to and to go, okay, like within the next next year, I'm going to be probably financially quite well off. I'm going to, um, cause I, you know, I, I've lived in a life where I've just been not, you know, scraping the surface with that stuff, uh, uh in terms of finance and, and, and then, but you, I think you just start to real, but no part of me is like jumping for joy at that fact. And, and a lot of our systems of being are like that, the hierarchy of importance puts that as a really important thing. Like, I can't wait to be rich, man. Being rich is going to be the best thing ever. But like, I think it's not until you come to one of these things where it, it stops. It stops really. I think that if in a few years time, my music means that I'm a millionaire. I don't think, I don't really think externally it's going to matter very much because of all the things that I've gone through. Do you know what I mean? It's going to make certain things more comfortable, of course. Like I'm going to have a more comfortable life. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sit up here and be one of those hypocrites that's going like, I'm not going to enjoy my money. Yeah, right. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, good, I'll, 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 I'll enjoy, I'll enjoy my money because I've worked hard for it. But like, I, I'm not, but also as well, just, just to say, to, to counter that, I wouldn't ever want to get so rich that it becomes detrimental. That's when I think that there's a, to, to the greater good of the people around me. But like, I think that, um, yeah, it just, it just cremates all of those things. And then, you, and then you realize what's really important into being happy. And then when you, I think when you start realizing that if it, if it's health, if it's food, if it's shelter, if it's friends, and if it's the ability to be able to be creative and, and those fundamentals are covered, because uh, I've been super happy being super broke. I've been really happy and I've had some of the best times in my life. I think back to summers with my mates where like, you know, we were scraping by and um, just just on the beach with a few beers. Like, uh, and, and those some, some of the happiest memories of my life. It's just very simple memories, you know. So like, I think I think when we start realizing that we don't really need a huge amount to to find that state of happiness and everything else is just a bonus, then all these things that divide us suddenly become less important because like, so what if that person's got a different religious opinion to me or if that person's got a different viewpoint on um, fundamental things like what they want to do or how they want to express themselves or how they want to live, the lifestyles they want to choose. It, why should that make me angry if, if my base needs are covered? They can just get on with it and do what the hell they want, you know what I mean? So, th and that's the thing that I sometimes find confusing about humans is we, we really do let what other people do let the the things that other people do impact us so much to the point where it starts making us angry and divided and uh, it's always confused me a lot why do you think that is like I, I why do you think that is that people are so I think, focused I think, on that i think um i think there's biological reasons for it i also think we've clumsily ended up in a state where things like politics and media have become emotively driven because we've realized that by playing to people certain biology but biologic traits so i'm gonna try and break this down so i'm not just saying i don't want to lose any people or tr trying to make this a lot more simple so when people i think we back in the day we evolved from tribes where to be socially accepted meant life or death because if people didn't socially accept us we're kicked out of the tribe and then a lion will come and eat us <laughs> and yeah. we'll die or a wolf will get us and we'll die because if we're not part of a tribe we don't have that collective group that's a biological survival instinct and, and this is, it's been proven that this stays with us so when you're socially accepted or rejected we feel this immense sense of fear and we want to do everything in our power to not feel that way so we find and form groups and then media and politics play on this by going so you're the left you're the right and you're part of these groups right and your opinions mean you're the, this is your tribe and these are the people that have got your back right and um so people find these groups and um, and i think the thing the where we've clumsily ended up is 
your opinions are what put you in these groups. So if you if you're for um, building borders around this country, that means you're in Group A. The people who don't agree with that, they're in Group B, right? And 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 then find your group, and then these opinions become your social status. And if you disagree with them, you'll fall out of this group. And if you hold on to it, it means that you can say that that group are bad, and then you can find your people. And I think this is a really backwards way to think about things because problems are very fluid, and they should be changing. Our opinions shouldn't really find be the things that um, bring us to our tribe of people. And I think that's where we've clumsily ended up because. Because not, because these problems are real life problems that impact the f us future and survival. Absolutely, yeah. uh, and we've kind of counterproductively ended up in a place where the decisions that we're making, and now we're we're fighting so much that we can't actually logically, rationally sit down, mediate, and go. Actually, this is the right solution right. that that um, ensures the survival of our species. So, I, I just that that's what I would just I just urge people to really question their beliefs and question the person's belief who offends you the most mm. and say, okay, why is why are these feelings of opposition coming up and how can I healthily mediate between this, you know? That's powerful advice. Go to the source. What makes you, what what scares you the most? What makes you the, the angriest? And let's look at that. I think you're absolutely right. And it's almost this catch-22, right? This cycle because in our desire to survive and to belong to a tribe, we are dying we're going extinct because we're killing ourselves right and if uh, a nation divided itself against uh, it's a nation divided against itself a, a family a home divide a person divided against themselves can't survive um that's very well said we forget that our tribe is the human race not just a, a particular people group yeah and, and and i think by media and politics playing into and, and of course because because it does it, it plays into tribalism and i think that it, it plays into tribalism because it profits off of it uh -huh, because absolutely th th this absolutely. they've realized that it really works uh, and and t t to engage these like really like fear based responses Absolutely. they get the most engagement because yep. of this tribal response mm -hmm. and and when they get the most engagement and attention because they're playing yep. to this tribal response yep. this um primal response in mm -hmm. people they get more money and that's the problem this is the problem of with course. profit yeah. if profit is is not um married to social good mm -hmm. this is when the problems start emerging because we're we're valuing attention means money right in in right. the in the world uh, attention means power in the political world and attention means money in the world yep. of media and it means power so it's like when that's not married to social good and and profit and power are above social good um and that's all very well and good until uh, until we get to a point where we can't have social good because we're fucking we, we've we've gone too far over the edge th yeah, there's no yeah, point yeah. of return and then we're just trying to fix the damage that we cause exactly. so that's why i think it, it really urge the the scales to go back the other way where social good tops profit and power right. i see what you're yeah. saying and i would i would go as far as to say it even goes beyond um social issues and politics but we can even see it in the music industry where there's division mm. where, where there's stereotypes right where you you have and i can't speak too much for you know the the elite in the music industry right but i know that there's plenty of power games there right where certain people control certain artists and you have mm -hmm. certain even people groups that are heavily represented in one genre or the other right and now if mm -hmm. we're not careful we start going oh that's their music or this music and now you have division right and you now you have this mm -hmm. idea of that was ours i was actually wondering um i was going to ask you if you're comfortable answering this um sure it, when it comes to hip hop and rap, I don't know how it is in the UK. Um, mm. I was born and raised in Germany. I'm Cuban and German. I'm not originally from yeah. the States, but I live here now. And I've seen, heard even from other artists when it comes to hip hop rap, a lot of times people that are of Caucasian descent would get mm -hmm. certain critique when they're trying to rap and dive into the hip hop world. Has that mm -hmm. ever been your experience in the UK? That there was any type of a, this is our the, hip hop, the, what are you talking this, about? The, rap? The, this, is, this is where I stand on it, right? The, the hip hop, movement is really rooted in within the civil rights movement mm -hmm. and it's really rooted in within tr you know a, a, a black voice which is really really important right and i think always honoring those roots because we should always be pushing right. towards a level playing field for everybody that's a fundamental foundational thing and and i think that um when you're uh, and, and just being like this is where i came from i'm so grateful of this of this birthing this this now this thing that i'm so inspired by and, and, and can play with um and and then uh, and then basically not fronting like i'm because if, if i'm inspired by these songs from the ghetto or i'm inspired by these songs coming from a place of black poverty 
but that's not my experience. Why would I rap about that? And I think that's when the line starts getting blurry. When I I'm, see what you're when saying. I'm, t and that's when it starts getting into the world of appropriation, where I'm talking about something that's not my experience. But then, but then there's it's you, and this is the funny thing. It's usually some like white girl Karen that's like you're a culturally appropriating hip hop, yes, and oh they're pointing the finger. It, it normally it normally is, and it's like wh when it's just like. And this this is the problem when I start when I start having a problem with like ownership race ownership of a mm. genre mm -hmm. that is a very divisive thing. It's actually counterproductive. Agreed. When it's like actually no, you can only sing this if you're Indian. You can only sing this yeah. if you're uh, Jamaican. Right. You only, do you know but what I mean? Because yeah. that that, it, that I think that is a very problematic thing. I think Agreed. there there are examples where you're you're lyrically within the content, but I think that because. Everything is an amalgamation of everything. So, so it, it, the same with music. Like when you start looking back to the um, origins of um, of hip hop, you're you're sampling from ba break beat. Then you're going back to blues, and then you're yep. from blues, you're going back to um, to things th that even precede that. With yep. uh, and it's like that. There's with within that, yep. and within when you start tracing the origins of music, you're going to see. A massive mixed pool of mm -hmm. races of people because it's got to travel from X some people, to some Y to Z. Yeah, some people are you uh, were all originally from Africa, anyways, Ethiopia or so. Different theories out there where it all started, but it's true, a hundred percent. We see that in all kinds of genres, even when it comes to Latina, uh, Latin music. You know, you have Arabic influences, right? But it's inter mm. interesting, and that ties back to that animal kingdom and the te territorial that we tend to do. Is that I think mm -hmm. sometimes people that are quick to jump and say, "Wait a minute." Uh, um, I think that's just because there's this desire to belong. There's this this hunger for identity. And people will go, what do you sure. mean Arabic influences? This is, you know, flamenco. This is Spain. And it's like, yeah, calmate, you know, slow down for mm. a second. Look at who conquered Europe, you know, long before, you know, the Romans were a part of it. So when we look at history, to your point, we see all these different influences. And to me, I think it's beautiful. Actually, I think that it's um, a wonderful way to honor. I've traveled so many different countries. My experience has been that people appreciated me respecting their culture, right? In Tanzania, trying to learn Swahili, dressing that, like the women yeah, there. That, There's a lo love for culture and language and music. It's like, let's share it. Let's not let it divide us. Yeah, and that's what it's all about for me. It's about, it's about the respecting it because, you know, and and even even when I say that, playing devil's advocate to myself, saying that, that it's all a big mismatch of stuff, I do also think that like the like certain subcultures and stuff to have that pride and that heritage with them is a beautiful thing. Yes, and yes, and, and to have and to have like basically prob positive positive um, pride positive sub subculture. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where where like and and that's where when when I'm talking about tribalism within the left and the right and stuff. To have positive positive elements of like patriotism and tribalism, I think is actually a beautiful thing. Agreed. Um, because because yeah, like being proud of where you came from. Like, I'm proud to be Welsh. Like I, th I think I think that that's a um, I think that is a that I think that is a very positive thing. It's when it starts getting divisionary. It's like if you were to have like if music was to be segregated, like we're working so hard to move away of a culture of segregation. Absolutely. And there's no right? possible so like, way. There's no way. We would all just, everybody gets one, one note. <laughs> we, yeah, would, we, just, we would have to break it down to like the, I don't know. You're just, you're just opening the stage for division. And of I think we, we've got enough division as it is. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's, that's just the thing is like, I, I know I'm respect where the origins of this genre come from and i'm very mm -hmm. respectful of it i think it's wicked and, um, and a lot of my biggest influences are people like really rooted within that movement like the krs ones yeah. and the people who were like in in the trenches of the um yeah. of the civil rights movement with with hip-hop but the, for me that's very it's very inspiring um so it's just it's just kind of it's paying homage to that yeah that's awesome and have you received that respect as well do you feel because i can de definitely I, tell that you respect and you know where you you come from what's influenced you I, i've um, seen i think i think the really cool thing because my in, my intention with this album because before this i always was uh i was a, i guess because my adhd my club my albums were all very like eclectic so like okay it would be a hip-hop song and then it'd be a rock song okay. and then it would be a ballad then like and this and this album i just really wanted to dig into hip-hop and yeah i mean i, I it's it, it's always difficult to know from YouTube comment sections, but sure. when I started seeing re reaction videos and I started seeing people um, reacting to it from sort of like American ghettos and stuff yeah. like that, and they were like giving it props, I was like, this is so cool. Good. Like I, I, I genuinely felt like this is so cool because if it, if this is something that that can be banged in like back in the hood yeah. when i'm a, a kid kid from a welsh village do you know what i mean i'm not claiming anything like this um <laughs> then it's for me it's really cool it's just like 
that's 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 the ultimate sign of respect for me and it feels good. really good yeah. heck yeah of course that leads me to my to my final thought um i don't want to keep you any longer i'm so grateful for your time man you're saying a lot of deep 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 stuff and i really that's hope cool. people are listening but it makes me think of and i hope this can be a little bit of an encouragement to you i was up uh, when i was preparing for the interview trying to you know come up with some questions what can we talk about and i wanted to flow um i thought of mosaic you know the art of mosaic broken glass yeah. And uh, it somehow just popped in my mind. I'm like, you know, you, you make me think of your work and what you do makes me think of mosaic. And the reason why mm. I say broken, colorful glass is because I feel like you have been through things that have tried to break you, maybe at times even have broken you. Um, but it has created something really beautiful. And I know we live in a culture, at least in the West, where things that are like broken, the word broken sounds negative, right? We think of it as, oh, gosh, something bad. But actually, when we look at other cultures like the Japanese culture, they actually adorn it with the golds and they put the pottery back together. It becomes beautiful. And you are impacting, in my opinion, a lot of different people, just as mosaic is composed of different colors and patterns. You are um, you have a, you've been given a gift and I'm very proud of you that you're using it to create because you're reaching many different people and many different people, groups, walks of life, music, genre lovers, um, just like light shines through mosaic and projects various colors it's not one-sided it's not one faceted it's multifaceted multicolorful, colored whatever the word is um and your music does that and so i guess my thought that came to my mind today you know take it or leave it was just be encouraged that whatever has felt broken in your life and whatever has felt like i don't know wasted is not been wasted it's being put together into a beautiful masterpiece of mosaic that's just it's very very phenomenal to watch and i'm particularly honored because time is our most precious commodity now i'm gonna get emotional and i'm very <laughs> honored that you shared a piece of your life on this channel i i respect time greatly i think time is very very precious and the fact that you said, you know what, I'm going to give Rosalie and this channel an hour and a little more. Actually, we went a while. <laughs> um, I'm very humbled, you know, that our paths crossed and that uh, we got to talk about these things. But I hope you know that you're impacting people and you're, you're a mosaic, man. You're like, <laughs> you're bringing joy. You're bringing hope. You're helping people to dance in the light. <laughs> so uh, I'm really, really proud of you. You know, it feels a little bit like a brother from another mother. I'm telling you, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm, t I'm telling yeah. you, you even remind me of one of my brothers a little bit, but that's for another, that's a story for another day. <laughs> I'm just freaking no, proud of you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's been, yeah, it's been really nice talking and uh, no, I appreciate your time as well. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so honored, man. So what's, what's next? More music? We're just gonna, just gonna keep creating. Yeah. The, na the next one's, vision? the next one's a bit of a deep one. I, I, um, cause, um, I always like to try and think about the order of how I'm releasing things. And, and there's been a few sort of like animal flow and illness were just a bit more sort of like yeah, yeah. hardcore hip hop -y flex and stuff. So the next one that I'm putting out, so, um, um, it was really funny. Actually, it was actually originally going to be like this two minutes long song that I wrote and and it's a lot more sort of sung and um and then I, I had the, it was actually f off the back of the because uh, I, I was chatting to Knox a couple of weeks ago we put it out um and then I, we, I was chatting a lot about my mate Joe and um I think I think that just brought it to the forefront of my mind because I hadn't spoken about him in a while and um I just I for some reason I was like I, I just want to put something on the end of this song for him because I, cause I hadn't written about it in a while and, and that's what I've done so, so, so I just um, I, so it's almost like now this, this song with two acts in, in a way and, and, I, and I, wrote, I wrote the second half literally last week and I was like I sent it because it was ready to go it was already mastered and I was like I sent it to, the, to the, my mastering engineer and I was like can we stick this on the end I was like, and it's another minute and a half and, um, and even the video we've had to we've had to now go okay shit we need to make the end of this video now so um so I'm I'm kind of rushing finishing that at the moment, but um, it feels it feels a lot more complete now. So I've got that coming out um, the 9th of May. Oh no, the 9th of June. Sorry, we're in May right now. 9th of June. So um, yeah, I'm excited by that. And then I've got this live version of Animal Flow coming out. In, by the time this comes out, it may already be out. I yeah. know oh, it will definitely be out because it's tomorrow. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so this is me in the past talking about my song that's now out. Okay, talking sci-fi, man. I love me a good sci-fi movie. We're like in the middle of it right now. Are we the past yeah. and the future? <laughs> and it's got and it's got seven million views right now. Oh, it's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Keep watching um, it, people. Watch it. I'll put all the links <laughs> below. Subscribe to Ren if you haven't yet. If you haven't yet, it doesn't matter with you. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Subscribe. Watch all the links. 
So much good stuff to explore, man. I'm so freaking proud of you. Keep going, Thank keep you. creating, keep dancing in the light and yes, choosing sir. life, man. All right, Lee. All right, Ren, I'll cool. see you soon. Thank you. Take care. You Bye -bye. too, man. Bye.